Hello, this is Reza from Radacad. In this video, I'm going to talk about Power Query parameters, how they can be helpful in uh, making your Power Query work dynamic, which can be Power Query related to the Power BI semantic model, uh, which you can then refresh it in Power BI website without needing to open Power BI desktop, or it can be the Power Query work you have done for Power BI data flows or Microsoft Fabric data flows. And with the change of that parameter, the configuration that you have made is going to change. Let's go and see how this is going to work. Okay, so uh, to understand how this works, uh, let's jump into uh, a demo. Uh, I have Power BI Desktop open here, and let's assume that in this Power BI Desktop, I'm doing some uh, data transformation. It might not be even a data transformation. It might be just getting data from a particular source. Uh, let's say, for example, I'm getting data from SQL Server or Excel. In any of these situations, when you say, uh, let's get data from SQL Server or from Excel, uh, one of the options that comes up first First, and I enable my zooming so that you can see it much better in the zoomed mode. Um, one of the options that comes is the configuration that you have to pass on, which in this case can be things such as the server um, URL, the database, if you are connecting to a SQL server or a database like that, or it can be, for example, if you are getting data from an Excel workbook or Excel worksheet, it can be the path that you provide, uh, the file name, all of that. Uh, all of that can be configurable. Even in here, you can see when I choose the SQL Server as a source, one of the options here is to choose a new parameter. Now, uh, you can start by creating a parameter right over here, or you can go to an existing solution that you have and add a parameter inside that. Uh, let me just go inside an existing solution. So what I'll do is I'll just build a solution so that you can see this is, for example, assume that this is an existing solution. Um, so in this one, what I'm going to do is I'm getting data from an Excel file. And let's say I just select a couple of these tables, customer table and fact table just to give you an idea. Uh, I'll go to transform data. This will open the Power Query editor uh, inside Power BI Desktop for me. Um, and this is the place that we might also have some transformations. In this case, I don't. It is just loading data into a destination, but uh, you can assume that this might have a transformation in here. Uh, now, the part that I want to make parametric in this case can be things such as the path to that uh, Excel file. And in the list of transformation options, in the list of steps here, we always have this source step, which is the very first step. And if you click on that setting icon for that, you'll see that uh, we have this file path. Now, you can change that to a parameter. Um, and to get that option to see that parameter settings, uh, you basically need to have inside the view uh, of Power Query Editor, you need to have these parameters always allow. If you don't allow it, that doesn't mean that you cannot create parameter. You can still create parameter, but this little thing that you see, uh, this little drop down that you see here, and this is what that setting would enable for you. Without that, you, you need to create the parameter yourself and then go and hard code it and use it over there, which is still fine, uh, but it would be just a couple of more steps to do. So having that checkbox always allow makes it much easier. So I, I'm going to use that here, but then in the website, I'll show you the other method that if you don't have that, how you would do that. So in this case, let's say this path is what I want to be the parameter. So what I'll do is I'll go and say, create a new parameter. And um, I can call this parameter something like file path or file name. And uh, there are different data types you can choose. I'll choose text data type. And I put this current value. You always need to have like a current value. This value can be changed though. Uh, I click on OK. This creates a parameter. You see the parameter is just created over here uh, with that file path. Uh, and this also automatically changed that to be this uh, parameter. So when I click on OK, uh, and then I click on the last step, nothing really changed because I used the same file path in there. Uh, and then I can go to the other table and do the same thing in here. Uh, but in this one, I don't need to create a new parameter. I can just go and click on the parameter and choose the existing one. If you have more than one parameter, you would have the option to go and select the one that you want. 
And so just easy like that. Once you have done all of these setups, uh, this parameter value can be changed over here. Uh, I'll just keep it like this. And I say, well, let's go and close and apply so that this will load that data into the Power BI um, semantic model. In this case, I'm using the Power Query inside Power BI semantic model. So this is uh, all combined within this PBIX file whenever I save it. Uh, the idea, however, is that that Excel file path, or this might be SQL Server URL, this might be a Snowflake uh, URL, anything, uh, that path, I want it to be configurable, I want it to be changed. So while I'm inside Power BI Desktop, uh, whenever I want to go and change that, I don't need to go to Power Query Editor anymore. I can just click on Transform Data and then get into Edit Parameters. Uh, and click here, update the value. Once you update the value, there will be an option here saying that you have to refresh your data. You click on that and then it updates your data. Uh, uh, this is not a um, user parameter though. We use this usually as a parameter for the developer to go and change and something like that. For user parameters, we would use what if parameter, which I'll talk about it as a separate video later. Um, this is um, this is like that inside Power BI Desktop. So to change that configuration, I don't need to go to Power Query Editor. In Power BI website, it is even much simpler when you have the parameters. I'm going to just save this in um, in my document or something like that. Um, inside this folder is fine. Let's just save it inside this folder. I call it parameters. Um, and, then, and then I'm going to just publish it so that I show you what this looks like inside Power BI website. So uh, I'll publish it into into one of the workspaces that I have here, let's say this workspace. Now assume that as a developer, I have created this Power BI solution, I published it through the website, um, and then sometimes I want to change that file name, the file path, the SQL Server URL, all of those kind of things. I want to change it. The reason for creating the parameter was to make it easier for me to do that modification without opening the Power BI desktop. And that is one of the things that this helps a lot with that. Okay, uh, we got an error here. Let me see what is the issue of publishing it. I think my sign-in details isn't correct. Let's just sign in one more time. should have used my multi-factor authentication configuration and things like that. So let's just get it done. Hopefully this time is better. Publish again. And let's publish it to the same, to the same place. I'll just keep it simpler. I'll just publish it to my workspace for keeping things simple. Um, so here it is. Let's publish to my workspace. Um, so what is possible after publishing this is to go into the setting of this Power BI semantic model or data set and edit it over there. While this is thinking, I'll go inside the Power BI website. Here uh, you would have the um, objects that you have here. One of them is your semantic model. When you go to the refresh of your semantic model, when you go to the schedule refresh or even to the setting, if you have a parameter in your semantic model, you should have a section for a parameter. When you expand it, you should see that. Now in this particular semantic model that I opened, I didn't really have any parameter. So it says that you haven't configured any parameter in this. Now this is uh, published. Okay, let's go and have a look at this. I published it to, um, to this workspace. Let's go to that workspace and this, um, yep, here it is, my report and my semantic model. When I go to the setting of semantic model, uh, one of the options would be the parameters. You have all other options as well, such as gateway configuration, things like that. But this parameter is the one that is important here. You see, I can easily change this. Let's say this is a new file path, just some changes. And once you do the change, then you can say apply and then refresh your semantic model. Without opening your Power BI desktop, you have this ability to do the modification. And you can have as many as parameters you want. You can have parameters that are text, parameters that are number, and date, values, all of those kind of things. That was parameter inside Power BI desktop. But what about um, 
Power Query inside Power BI data flows or, uh, or even um, data flow gen two in Microsoft Fabric. Let's go and have a look at that. So here I have a data flow already. Uh, which I'm going to just open it. This is Dataflow Gen 2, but Dataflow Gen 1 is also the same in terms of usage of parameters. Uh, I can go and open my Dataflow. Um, if you are not familiar with Dataflows, they are like Power Query Online. I have a separate video explaining about all of the processes of um, using Dataflow, create a Dataflow and, and all of that, and what are the benefits of Dataflow Gen 2 in Microsoft Fabric compared to Power BI, so go and check that out. Uh, here, I'm just going to talk about the parameters. So that configuration that I talked to you about, that is under view, uh, always allow parameters. But even if we don't have that option, right? Let's say I enable it now, but um, I didn't have that option. And I want to do the same thing in here. I want to make the source um, details configurable. How can I do that? So when I go to the setting, it doesn't give me that um, parameter yet, right? So what I'll go, I'll copy this path and then I'll go and create a new parameter. So here you also see the process of creating a parameter. So here I can go and create a new parameter. Let's just call it file path or anything you might want to call it. Just remember that inside Power Query, these are case sensitive. So the way that you write it should be the same way that you use it. The type is going to be text. The current value, I just use that value that I copied over there. It seems that control V didn't work over there. So let's just do one more time, control C or copy, come to parameters, new parameter, file path. The type is going to be text and then paste it over here, right? Uh, apparently it doesn't like that. Okay, so here it is. I've got it. Um, so this is the parameter, right? And when you create the parameter, parameter is also like one of your queries over there. You can put it in a different folder. It is good idea to put it in a different folder, makes it more organized. You can change the parameter value right over here, but now I want those queries to use this as the parameter source. So I'll click on any of those queries. I'll go to the setting of these. Uh, in this case, because it doesn't have the parameter um, drop down. what I'll do is I'll just simply go and change wherever this path has been used. In this case, it's a text value. Uh, and I put that parameter name over here. And as soon as I do that, this diagram view actually shows a really nice view of how this works. So it shows that I have this parameter and this is um, kind of sourced from there. I can go and use the same thing for, for the other one, for the product table. I'll go to the source and I'll go and use the file path in here again. And uh, that is why I'm saying that if you have that always allow in the view tab, it helps in the process. You don't have to do this bit manually. Uh, but understanding that what is happening behind the scene is actually helpful because you also get to learn how this M scripting works. It's not a complicated situation in this case. Sometimes, however, uh, the way that this has been, this is used, sometimes you might have it as part of a text, like you might have the, uh, like this part as uh, as a parameter, but then the file name always there. Then you might need to concatenate these two together, which can be quite an interesting situation. Uh, so it's good to good to learn how to work with these values. As I change this, you see that my diagram view is also getting updated, which is um, quite nice to see this diagram view inside the um, data flow editor in Power BI. Um, website. And then the last one, which in this case, the last one is coming from other tables. So, so here is actually the way that I change it. Everything comes from that parameter. As soon as I go and make the change in that parameter, everything would change. Uh, when I publish it, this would be as part of that parameter. At the moment, however, at the time of creating this video, it is not possible to edit the parameter value outside of Dataflow Editor. So you have to actually open it and then once you open it, you can go and either change the parameter value over here, or you can click on the parameter value and just change it over here. Uh, so once you open it, you can do that. But um, in the future, hopefully at some point, similar to the um, semantic model, you would be able to just go to the setting and edit the parameter value. Uh, and that would make everything uh, much simpler. Uh, so I hope you really, uh, 
enjoyed this video. This is a method you can use in any situation, not particularly for the source file path uh, or for the source um, address. It can be for anything, like for example, your financial year start month is July. You want this to be configurable to be uh, April so that everything changes based on that. Uh, a lot of things can be dynamic using this method. So make sure that you use it and make your uh, queries much easier to change and maintain in the future. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Microsoft BI and Microsoft Power BI and Fabric. Until the next video, bye.